Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, great. Hi. Uh, yeah, thanks very much, Nick. That was really interesting. I've not really heard of any of that stuff, uh, which I feel ashamed about, but now I know, so that's exciting. Um, yeah, so my name is Jake. Uh, my partner and I, um, her name's Kate. She's actually uh, drawn the long straw today and is out in the fields working. Um, so, uh, and it's a rare, nice day. So, yeah, that's good for her. But anyway, we run um, a small market garden called Cosse Growers, um, which is in Glenelg. Um, so we're in the Northwest Highlands, um, just, yeah, just over the, over the sea from Skye um, on the mainland. Um, in a wee village with about 300 people here. Um, so yeah, we run a, a little market garden. Um, we've got we've got actually about uh, almost four hectares of land, so 10 acres, but we grow on a very small amount of that, um, partly because it's very challenging conditions. Most of it is north facing hillsides. Um, there's quite a lot of boggy ground, quite a lot of um, yeah, wooded ground. Um, and we also are both busy doing other things quite a lot of the time. So um, yeah, we have a kind of fairly mixed life, um, but it's exciting. Um, so uh, last year was probably our first proper year doing the market garden. And we were selling about 15 veg boxes a week uh, through the summer months. We started probably end of June, end of June, beginning of July through till October, November time. Um, and yeah, we, we sell all our veg boxes locally. Um, so we uh, yeah deliver probably just over half into the village and the other half into a village um, just over the hill um, and we also supply local businesses so there's the village shop buys basically anything surplus that we have um, the pub will like happily take yeah whatever we can offer them um, and there's a couple of little cafes um, takeaway places to also buy our stuff so that's great so we're, yeah really lucky we've got a very captive market um, yeah and people are really really happy because it's yeah hard to get good quality fresh veg um, yeah, often in the Northwest Highlands. Um, so yeah, we do, um, I'll show you some photos in a minute. Um, I'm just going to talk for a little bit and, um, yeah, as Nick said as well, like if you've got any questions, please do ask. Um, uh, yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, we do lots of different things. We try and run the market garden as sustainably as possibly as possible. Um, yeah, using sort of low, yeah. Um, low energy inputs and sustainable practices. Um, so all of our beds are done using the no dig system. Um, so we basically, yeah, we started out just with yeah rough ground sort of rashes and um, grass and yeah all sorts of things. And we just put we lime most of it, um, it's very acidic. Um, and then we put on cardboard, which we get. Everyone brings us their cardboard these days, so we get piles of cardboard from all the locals, um, bringing up all their yeah Amazon delivery packages or whatever. Um, and we put cardboard on top of that, and then we put seaweed, which we collect from the shore, and then manure. So we've got lots of different local crofters uh, who provide us with all sorts of amazing manure. Um, so we've got yeah horse, cow, chicken. Uh, and probably some other stuff mixed in with that, I can't remember. Um, and so we just pile that all on top and that the beds are tend to be made early winter um, and then they're pretty much ready to go by the next spring. We tend to do potatoes as a first crop and then we grow from there. Um, yeah, and we use our own, most of our own compost as well. So again, using local resources, so we use wool um, from, yeah, clippings from local crofters, the, the dags, which are the sort of, uh, pooey end bits um, are really good, like poo and poo and wool is a very good compost maker. Um, we use wood chip from local forestry operations, uh, seaweed, as I've said, and manure, um, lots of garden waste and kitchen waste. And there's also, as I mentioned, a couple of little cafes locally. So we take some of their coffee grounds um, and veg waste as well. So we're just trying to like, yeah, keep it all as local as possible and just add as much nutrition as we can to the soil. Um, we're trying to go plastic free as much as possible, which is really hard. Everything's made of plastic these days. Um, but we're lucky we live in a, a village that, you know, is, I guess, you know, relatively untouched, as untouched as anywhere is um, by the modern world. And there's still a lot of really like good um, sustainable farming practice going on and a lot of um, local history. You know, it wasn't long ago that people were farming without plastic, um, without polytunnels, any of that sort of stuff. Um, so there's lots of people that we run to when we, yeah, trying to work out a problem. And yeah, they usually can tell us how to do it. 
Um, so yeah, people are really important for us. But yeah, we don't have a polytunnel. We've got a small greenhouse um, that we made uh, using locally milled wood and windows that we collected from people. People are always trying to get rid of windows, so that worked out well. Um, we don't use plastic ground cover. Um, so a lot of, yeah, a lot of big, bigger farms, I guess, but even smaller farms use loads and loads of the Mipex plastic ground cover. And our experience of that is that it just tends to degrade and you end up with plastic all over the place. Um, so yeah, on our very small scale operation, um, we just use the no dig method, which tends to reduce the amount of weeds, but we also do a lot of weeding. Um, so that's one of our main pastimes. Um, we use uh, soil blockers. So we're trying to move away from plastic um, uh, uh, modules for growing seedlings in. So we use uh, soil blockers, which is a metal contraption and basically you mash compost into these things and then you, you press it out and it basically poos out uh, five little, like just individual compost blocks um, that have plastic around them and you can grow your seedlings in that. And so that's a really good way of getting without, getting without plastic. And we, yeah, um, put them all in wooden trays. Um, yeah, made from locally milled wood, so yeah trying to yeah just keep that out as much as possible um, and then in terms of our packaging we try and use paper and biodegradable um, stuff as much as possible and there's actually a woman in the village who um, she's a seamstress so she's made us all these amazing hessian bags that we use for our veg boxes um, yeah that's that um, yeah we have a really challenging environment to grow in which is probably well it's definitely not uncommon in the northwest islands and generally in the uk um, there are some advantages to it. Well, we've, we've decided there's some advantages to it anyway. Um, first of all, the frost is very good for taste. It tends to bring out the sugars and a lot of veg. Um, so our winter veg is, yeah, is dead tasty. Um, so that's good. And we've also discovered that the yeah, north facing slope stops our fruit trees from blossoming too early. So they don't tend to get nipped too much by, yeah, by late frost. Um, so yeah. We're not quite sure if that theory is a reality, but we're, we're going with it for now. Um, yeah, we've got a lot of sloping ground. So we've been building terraces. Um, Kate's been making lots of terraces with, um, I'll show you photos, but with brash. We use brash from our woodland thinnings um, to build up the front of the beds. And then we do our no dig um, yeah, process on the back of that. And we've also been using, we use a lot of different books, but this has been a really good book for us. Uh, it's called Farming While Black by a woman called Leah Penniman, who runs a farm in the States called Soulfire Farm. Um, and it's a really, really good book. But one of the um, one of the things she talks about is that historically, you know, black people in the States and across the world have been farming on very marginal land because they tend to get, you know, left with what's, yeah, the worst stuff. And in many ways, it's sort of similar um, to crofters in the Highlands. Um, so there's a lot of knowledge in this book about how to farm in very challenging conditions when you know most people would say maybe it's not worth it or not possible but you know people have had to do it people have had to eat and yeah we've all got to eat so um yeah we've taken a lot of inspiration from that book um do, 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 do. yeah maybe i'll show some um show some photos um oh yeah that was the other thing and we try and we're trying to work in partnership with local people as much as we can um so we don't grow any salads ourselves there's a, a woman um, yeah, and the next land long who grows salads for our veg boxes. Um, we're working with a friend um, who she's been doing um, the sort of herbal side of our operation. So she makes, um, yeah, little herbal packages for our veg boxes. Um, yeah, that have been really successful. Um, and then we've been working with local crofters tend to exchange veg for manure and all sorts of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's good. And I'll try and um, share my screen now. Yeah, I've just got a few photos. Uh, can you see? Can you see a photo? Yeah, great. Um, so this was at the very beginning. Um, yeah, of our yeah um, yeah of our enterprises. Um, so it was actually a concrete pad already um, on the land. This is the very corner of the fields where we're growing. Um, and yeah, the, pretty much the first thing we did was to build this greenhouse. So this is, yeah, me and Kate. I've, I'm in the photos because Kate tends to take the photos. Um, yeah, so she's there just doing the tech stuff. 
Um, so yeah, we built this greenhouse, which has just been amazing, but it's our only covered space. So we've, yeah, really trying to, um, yeah, grow appropriate vegetables that grow well outside here, which actually there's loads of them. And again, speaking to local people, they'll tell you specific varieties um, of things to grow and yeah, little tricks to protect tatties from the frost and all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's us doing that. Okay, so, oh yeah, so scything, um, yeah, we do, we manage most of the sort of grass and bracken um, just with scythes. Um, so yeah, Nick, you probably know, but we, I uh, know him, but we get our sides from Simon Fairley, who has the size shop down in the south southwest, and they're really good Austrian size, very easy to use. Um, and yeah, so we're trying to use sort of appropriate technology as much as we can. So we've not brought any heavy machinery onto our land so far. Um, so we've been managing it, I suppose, with people and like sort of low scale technology. Um, and that's been good. We've not, yeah, not ruined the soil yet, I don't think, which is good. Um, yeah, we're not, yeah, hopefully not polluting too much. Um, and it just gives you time and space to like look and listen and see what's going on. So a lot of our time spent trying to work in harmony with nature as much as we can um, and sort of responding to what's going on. Uh, so that was probably our first year. Um, so you can see some no dig beds just there. We've got some onions, uh, maybe some parsnips and peas, and you can kind of see the cardboard sticking out of the edges where we made the beds. Uh, but basically it was all rough ground in the background background here um, that's sort of what it looked like when we started um, and slowly we've just yeah um, gained a bit of, gained a bit of ground there um, so that's the greenhouse when it's finished that's probably yeah not long after it's finished um, in the first year and then this is um, this is last year um, so we've now got I think we've got almost close to 60 beds um, set, we work in seven meter beds for some reason that seem to work with the size of our land um, and they're about 80 centimeters wide and these are all no dig um, with wood chip in between um, hand weeded no rotivations or plows or anything like that um, so yeah this is the the little garden down here and then in the background um, you can just about see some terraces on the hills um, yes yeah, so these are run of beans uh, from last year we did grow a little bit of salad at the beginning spring onions in the foreground um, and then we're using wire wire netting to keep the birds off at the beginning um, so yeah this is probably quite recently um, yeah this is um, our blueberry patch so we've expanded onto the hillside and as I said we've got very acidic soil so we thought what can grow in acidic soil and blueberries are really good so we've got um, 200 blue, odd blueberry bushes and we're going to add more um, and they're growing happily in the soil here. They produced pretty well last year and that was their first year. Um, yeah. And these are our terraces, pretty poor photo, uh, but you can see the brash at the front. So we put stakes in and brash and then we drag all the sort of dry bracken down to fill up the gap and then add our seaweed and manure. These are our plum trees. So yeah, as you can see, this is our north facing slope, tiny bit of sun trying to creep over the edge there, failing at the minute. Um, but yeah, we kind of, yeah, it does catch the sun and actually it's relatively sheltered from the southwesterly, big southwesterly winds here. So that's another advantage. Um, yeah, so we, yeah, again, these are no dig, no dig um, plum, uh, plum trees. Um, yeah, staked up and tied up with inner tubes. And then these are the soil blockers that I was talking about. Um, so some little beetroot or chard um seedlings growing in them and they grow really well and yeah like done with no plastic so you don't end up with loads of little plastic modules um, so yeah i think that was sort of most of uh what i was going to say i uh, hope it hasn't been too much of a ramble but yeah i'm definitely up for some questions if anyone's if anyone's got them